Hello, it's John Messenger again. I'm going to be talking today about setting up a VFD with our Centroid system. Now I've chosen to use the Honyang VFD from China. These are a very popular VFD. Uh, you'll find them a lot on eBay. I spent maybe $130 on this VFD. I've had a great deal of luck with them personally, so I don't have any problem trying to use one again. What we're going to do today is kind of go through the setup and make sure that uh, everybody understands how to set one of these up. It's pretty straightforward. There's a lot of pins and, and settings in there that can look confusing, but I'm going to show you the ones that I've used to get mine up and running and doing what it should be doing, and hopefully this helps you. All right, let's go over a brief overview now of the wiring for the VFD. First of all, there's two rows here that we're going to be talking about. There is an input, or an output rather, source from each of these that says DCM, and it does not matter which of the two that you use that say DCM, either of those two will work fine. If you just take a wire and jumped it from this black wire here into either where I have the yellow and the green, it will automatically switch the VFD on and in either in the forward or reverse direction. That's all it requires. So, in order for us to run this with the all-in-one DC board, what we do is take the DCM wire out here and we bring it in to here, beginning right here. This brings it into the spin reset common. We then take a jumper from that spin reset common and bring it over into spin enable common. So now we're supplying power to both of those two ports from this single port here. The blue wire I have goes back into the spin reset switch here. So that if there is a fault set, that the board can then send a reset signal and then reset the VFD if the fault has been triggered. The next thing that happens is after we pulled this black wire across and sent power to our spin enable, as you recall before in our previous video, the spin enable actually goes out and down and into our first primary contactor. It comes back out of that contactor and comes back into spin direction. Spin enable is just a relay. So when it gets spin enable signal, it closes the relay and now gives proper power to the spin direction signal. Once the spin direction signal receives its power, it's either going to go clockwise or counterclockwise. This is a two-way relay, so it's, it's either this way or that way. It's either forward or reverse always. This then sends power either to the yellow wire or the green wire. The yellow wire I have set into the reverse terminal on this block. The green wire I have set to the forward terminal on this block. So, it's either telling it to go forward or reverse. It's really as simple as that. The other wires we have down here, this is the fault checking, so that if this sends a fault, it sends that signal, if you'll recall, back into our fault checking system over here on the left on the uh, inputs. Then I have another wire coming off from here, two wires. There's the ACM wire, which is our common, and the red wire that you over see over there goes into the VI port. VI and common goes into spin speed common and spin speed. If you recall from our first video, that's the ones that are sending out the 0 to 10 volt signal to tell the VFD at what speed you want your spindle to run. So the VI and the ACM here come out and go into spindle speed common and spindle speed. That's it. That's, a, that's all the wiring that you really need to worry about on this upper level. Now, the 200, these are the 220 volts in, these are the 220 volts out, and they're all quite clearly marked on the sheet. I will go over that little sheet with you as well and put that into this video so that you can see the labels that are down here that I'm talking about that we can't currently see the way the camera is set up. Okay, real quick like FA and FB are the two terminals I use for the fault checking on our system. DCM is the one that I was telling you about that sends the power out to the system 
and then eventually back into either RST, reverse, or forward. And then here is the ACM, which hooks to spindle speed common, and the VI, which I hooked to spindle speed. These are the terminals that you need to concern yourself with on that system. The R, S, and T are the 220 volt inputs. The U, V, and W are the 220 volt outputs. And you also need to make sure that the jumper is set correctly over here by this terminal block for V, I. And the instructions are right here on how to set up that jumper to make sure that it is set for V, I, which is voltage in. That's really all there is to it. All right, let's go ahead and go now to setting up the VFD and the programming that we have to do for all the parameters. There's not that many, and so we'll go over them real quick like. Okay, now that we have all of our wiring completed, all that remains is to uh, program our VFD with the proper settings. So right now, we're going to go ahead and start by programming. Push program. You can see number one is here where we're going to be first, so we're going to push set. We want number one to be set to number one. This is for uh, source of the run command, which is going to be an external terminal, which is actually our board. The next one we're going to do is number two. We push program, set. We want to set it to number one. Number one is simulation amount. So this is telling it that it's looking for an outside signal and of a varying amount. So number two will be set to one. Number three is our main operating frequency, 60 hertz. Number four, this is our base frequency, which is also 60 hertz. Number five is our max operating frequency. I also have it set to 60 hertz. Six is set to three, which is our intermediate frequency. And seven we will set to 5, which is the lowest amount of frequency or the lowest hertz that I'm going to allow it to go to. Number 8 is our max voltage. 240 volts is what I run here in the US, so that's what we put in there. Now, the next one we're going to go to is 23. So we'll go up to 3 over one column up to 23, press enter for set, or set for enter. We want this to set to number one so that it will turn as a reverse spindle. So this is set to one. The next one that we were worried about is number 26. Number 26 is we want to set it to number one, which is a coasting stop, not a deceleration mode, since I do not have a decelerating resistor on this machine. Now, you might want to just double check some of your settings to make sure that they are correct. So we're going to go to number 44 next. We want to set that to number 2. That is for forward rotation. Set. Number 45 should be set to number 3, which is for reverse rotation. Number 46 is for the reset switch. We set that to 14 so that it is reset. We set number 40, I leave 47 and 48, 49 alone. I also leave 50 and 51 alone, and then I go to 52. 52 I have set to, to 0, 3, which is a fault indication. That's talking about terminals uh, FA, FB, and FC, and we want it to set to number 3. So, we do that. We then move on to number 70 program. Go back to zero, up to 70. We want this to be zero. Zero equals zero to 10 volt input, which is what we have on this board. The next one we want to set is 72. 72 we want to set at 60 because it is the highest analog frequency that it's going to go to and that's the 60 hertz. The final ones that we want to set is 144.
That is the maximum RPMs that my motor is rated for. My motor is rated for 1,710, so that's what I've entered here. The final ones that we're looking at will be number 176. This is very important. I forgot this the first time, and I couldn't figure out why I couldn't get everything to function correctly. And you'll see here in just a minute, when we go to 176, it needs to be set to uh, number 1, because that is your, your 50 or 60 hertz frequency. Actually, no, the one that was messing me up earlier was the uh, 144. I did not have it set to the proper RPMs for my motor, and so it wasn't making it operate correctly. Now that's all that you need to program into this, are those ones that I've given you. That will make your, your VFD function. Alright, let's move on to showing you how it all functions when it's running. Okay, now that we have it all wired in and all the setting and the parameters set, let's go ahead and show you how it functions. Open up our main screen and we go to MDI, which is your manual input. You can type in M3, which is spindle forward clockwise. We're going to put S as 1500, so that's spindle forward speed 1500 RPMs, and hit cycle start. And you can see it comes on at 1500 RPMs. So we want to change our spindle speed to 3000. Type in S3000. If we wish to change it to 1000, S1000. So you can see we have full control over the speed of our spindle now. Now if I want to hit M4 and I want to turn it backwards clock, or counterclockwise now, I can put M4 S 1500 and hit cycle start. What it'll do is it'll let it coast to a stop because I didn't put deceleration in it, spin to the other direction, and obviously we have the same amount of control up and down the spindle speed range as we would in the uh, forward direction. And that's pretty much it. We want to stop it, obviously, we type M5. M5 is the universal stop command. Hit cycle start, and there you go. That's all there is to setting this thing up. I hope that you, uh, that you have a little more comfort now in being able to do this. If you have any questions, please post and leave some comments. I'll do the very best that I can to help you out. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it.